As a fitness professional, you will need to be able to talk to your clients using language that they understand, as well as being able to communicate on a more technical level with healthcare professionals such as doctors, physiotherapists and exercise physiologists. In order to communicate effectively, we use the language of anatomy. This language uses technical terms to precisely describe the directions, structures and functions of the body. Our starting point is going to be how to navigate around the body. Think of it like reading a map. If trying to get from point A to point B on a map, we firstly use our compass to figure out true north. And then from there we can orientate ourselves to the different directions. In the body, we use a standard position called the anatomical position, which is like finding true north on a compass. And then we have the anatomical directions to relate body parts to one another. Let's explore this now. The anatomical position looks like this. Standing upright, head level with eyes facing forward, arms at the side with palms facing forward, and this is very important, and feet together. From this position, we can orientate all our different directions. Whenever you are analysing movement in the future and you are confused or finding it difficult to work out, always come back to this anatomical position to get your bearings. In the anatomical position, the body can be divided into three imaginary planes. These planes help us to clarify and specify movements. Just imagine that someone was going to slice me in half with a big samurai sword. A little harsh, but you'll get the picture. If I were sliced through here, I would fall apart into a front and a back position, or using anatomical language, into anterior and posterior. This is known as the frontal plane, and movements such as abduction and adduction occur. Now imagine I am sliced down the middle here, meaning I fall into a left side and a right side. This is called the sagittal plane, and movements such as flexion and extension occur. Lastly, imagine I'm sliced this way, right through the middle, giving me an upper portion and a lower portion, or using anatomical language, a superior and inferior portion. This is called the horizontal plane or the transverse plane, and here we can experience rotation and horizontal flexion and horizontal extension. So let's recap. When dividing the body into a front and a back portion, this is called the frontal plane. When dividing the body into a left and a right side, you have the sagittal plane. And when dividing the body into an upper and a lower portion, you have the horizontal or the transverse plane.